welcome to this uh, launch webinar. So uh, a couple of months ago, we launched a new product series uh, of Capacity Flash. We'll talk some, a bit more about that today. Uh, my name is Fredrik Nygren. I'm the Solutions Engineering Manager and Field CTO for NetApp in the Nordics and Baltics. Uh, and I'm very happy to have you with me today. So I'll start by sharing my screen. Perfect. So to kick it off, um, we're going to talk about three things today. So we're going to talk about our new capacity flash systems, a great way to get the performance you need at a price point that, uh, that is reasonable. Uh, we're also going to talk about a new way of consuming NetApp services and NetApp, uh, the NetApp portfolio. And in the end, we'll talk a bit about sustainability, which is a um, renewed focus for NetApp. So those are the three topics of the day. Uh, a bit about me, I've been with NetApp for eight years. Um, up until now, I've been the Solutions Engineering Manager for Sweden, uh, but we branched out and uh, um, my uh, Solutions Engineer and Solutions Architects uh, that sit in my team, they cover all of Nordics and Baltics. So happy to meet you if you meet me for the first time. And I'm gonna try to change slides. Perfect. So some of the things I will talk about today are not released yet. Um, when we talk about the sustainability dashboards at the end, uh, those are things that will probably come during the summer. So uh, uh, I need to show you this uh, non-disclosure agreement note. Uh, all of the things I talk about today that are marked with uh, uh, upcoming features, uh, I'll point them out to you, uh, are things that uh, may or may not happen. Uh, you know the drill. Uh, most of the things that I will talk about are already in our development pipeline, so they are likely to come. But of course, uh, I cannot promise anything. With that said, let's get into the presentation. So there are two big shifts in the market or two big trends that we see in the market. First of all, budgets are tightening. Uh, we're in a recession now, and in IT, it feels like we've been in a recession for 10 plus years. Budgets are becoming lower or flat, and we're expected to do more with less. So there's a focus on finding the best quality solution that you can find at a decent cost. So we cannot build the, the best possible solution because that would be too expensive, but also we, we cannot reduce the quality of the solutions that we build. So as IT professionals, uh, our job is getting harder again. Um, at the same time, sustainability is becoming more and more important to our customers. Uh, we have customers asking us for um, traditional things like uh, power and cooling, but also uh, how big is the uh, carbon dioxide footprint of the equipment that we, that we sell and that, that you operate. Um, so I will talk a bit about what we're doing around that, both in transparency, how we present the, the actual footprint to you, but also what we're trying to do to reduce that footprint. Like I said, this is the agenda for the day. Capacity Flash, a new ownership experience and sustainability. But we'll start with Flash. So uh, uh, we're really proud of, uh, of our old Flash products. When I started at NetApp eight years ago, we didn't really have a good Flash product. Uh, we had something called Flash Ray in the lab. It wasn't even highly available. So it wasn't anything that we could uh, sell to you customers that you could bring into production. It wasn't ready for prime time. Um, a short while later, and this is the summer of 2015, um, we, uh, we launched uh, all Flash Pass. So the same ONTAP that we've been selling since 1992, the same ONTAP that we've been developing, but now in an all Flash flavor. And I would say we were lucky in the way that ONTAP uses uh, hard drives and flash drives, because uh, since we write in, in new places on the drives all the time, we don't get the wear that you would usually get on flash drives. Um, we could take on tap and more or less apply it as is into an old flash world. And then we did some tuning and tweaking and performance improvements. So in, in the first couple of releases in the, in the nine series, we saw huge performance gains just by changing the software and handing off more of the responsibility of, uh, um, of keeping our data intact to the actual firmware and the flash drives. And that's placed us as a leader in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for uh, old flash storage arrays. We are extremely proud of that. Uh, and if we don't just trust Gartner, let's look at what GigaOM says. So uh, instead of a magic quadrant, they have a magic circle. Uh, the idea here is to be as close to the center as possible. And as you can see in both of these graphs, NetApp is well positioned to support any flash workload that you might have. 
There are two different reports on this, uh, on this slide. One is for uh, mid-sized business and one is for large enterprises. So for mid-sized business, the, the thing that uh, GigaOM uh, sees in NetApp and, and that they uh, like about the NetApp offering is that um, we can use the same appliance for a lot of different tasks in the data center. So uh, we take the capabilities that we offer, offer to large enterprises through ONTAP, the same ONTAP we deliver to mid-sized businesses. So you get enterprise features, enterprise uh, storage efficiency, enterprise data protection as a mid-sized business. On the right-hand side on this slide, we have large enterprises. Um, many of these large enterprises are moving into the cloud now and building their own hybrid cloud, so hybrid multi-clouds. Uh, the thing that GigaOM saw in the NetApp offering that they liked uh, for large enterprises is the fact that we have a unified control plane for all of these different environments that you might have storage in. Um, and we call that uh, we call that tool Blue XP. So Blue XP is your unified control pattern for, for data wherever it might be. Really proud of these ones as well. And the final one uh, for cloud file systems. So um, data storage systems in the public clouds uh, were also a leader. And I think the notable thing about this slide is that none of our traditional competitors, the, the Dells and HPEs and Pure Storage and uh, IBMs of the world, they're not on this slide um, because what they sell is on-prem products and, and they're good at that. I'll give them that, not the best, that's us. Uh, but we also provide the same capabilities, the same ONTAP, uh, as a storage platform in the public clouds. So you can have one way of managing and protecting and storing data regardless of where your data actually lives. Nobody else does that. And as a proof point of that, we recently launched uh, our, um, our support for VMware Engine in Google Cloud, Google Cloud VMware Engine. So the same VMware that you would be running on premises, you can run in, in Google Cloud. You can actually run it in AWS and Azure as well. And NetApp is, is the only storage platform that is supported for all three clouds um, as a data store, a supplemental data store. So you know that VMware in the public cloud is that's vSAN by default. But if you want to have better storage efficiency or better performance or better data protection, you might want to have some other kind of data storage platform for your data stores. That would be NetApp. So we're really proud of that. I just used this as a proof point of the things we do in the public cloud. With that said, let's stop talking about the cloud for now and go back on-prem. So capacity flash storage. I'm gonna talk a bit about why we're bringing this product out, uh, what it can do for you, what it is, and, and what the products look like. So for a while now, we've been living in a world where there's either spinning disk or flash drives. And flash drives are super fast, low latency, uh, good for any primary workload, but a bit expensive. On the other hand, the spinning drives, they are uh, cheaper, but they don't give you the same performance. So we usually talk about uh, um, flash for primary data for active and hot data and spinning hard drives for colder data or data that can be tiered off of the hot tier. And we've had this, this way of thinking before. Before flash started becoming a thing, we had different type of hard drives. We had uh, the uh, 10,000 RPM fast hard drives, we even had some 15,000 RPMs for a while. Uh, and then you had the capacity hard drives, uh, the 7,200 RPMs, uh, nearline SAS or SATA drives. And we, we built our storage tiers around these different drive technologies. Uh, and I was a storage admin back then. I was pretty good at calculating the number of spindles you need to get a certain IOPS or certain performance. Um, and we offered our customers internally where I was working either high performance storage, that would be the 10,000 drives in a RAID 0 or RAID 1 uh, setup, or capacity drives, cheaper, but slower, um, nearline SAS, RAID 5. So we already had a, a concept of tiering storage. Now, the problem here is that for some workloads, flash might be too expensive. And for other workloads, spinning hard drives might be too slow. So there's been a gap in in our portfolio, it's been actually it's been a gap in in the tools that we as storage administrators have been able to use to build our tiers, and that's capacity flash. So, in our performance flash today, we're using something called triple uh, triple layer flash. So we have the um, we have three layers of uh, 
uh, of data storage on each cell in the flash drives. What we're going into with the capacity flash is something called quad level. So we have four layers instead. So we can store more data on the same number of cells, get a better uh, capacity, but we need to, uh, um, the performance of those quad level flash drives aren't as good as the uh, triple layer flash drives. Yeah. So in all flash fast, the AFF A series, the storage systems that we've been selling for primary data in the last couple of years, just have a sub millisecond latency. Uh, often we're below half a millisecond in response time. On the capacitive flash, it's a bit slower, it's a two to four milliseconds. But again, that's, uh, that's nothing compared to the five to 10 to even more milliseconds of latency that you get from your hard drives. And it seems silly to argue around one millisecond or 10 milliseconds because it's really short time frames, both of those. But for an application that works, um, that works against the hard drives, let's say an Oracle database that keeps uh, transactional data, those milliseconds matter and they can make or break the performance of an application. So the systems we've sold or that we've launched is the NetApp AFF C series. Uh, completely new vessels. First of all, the nice Stormtrooper vessels here. Uh, there are three systems in the series, the C250, the C400, and the C800. And for those of you who know your NetApp products, there's an a250, A400, and A800 in the AFF A series as well. So these are the same, the same systems, but we replace the triple layer flash drives in the A series with core level flash drives for the C series. <coughs> Excuse me. So this gives you the best efficiency. So uh, uh, you have the storage efficiency that NetApp has, including storage efficiency guarantees. We can tear off cold data, even from these capacity flash drives down to spinning hard drives or to object storage. Um, we build these in a scalable way. So just like any NetApp system, uh, all of these have two controllers in them, so two nodes. And in a cluster, you can have 24 nodes. You can take 12 of these boxes and build them together into one cluster. So that's how you get your scale. You can also add hard drives underneath if you want to scale up. We have built-in security. So uh, as NetApp customers, you know that we have our snapshots and our clones and our replication. That's a good way of protecting data. But we're also built in autonomous ransomware detection. So uh, if, or might I even say when, uh, you get hit by ransomware, the system itself will detect a new pattern and will uh, um, send an alert, take a snapshot immediately, and might even block the user. So uh, uh, the best protection in the business and it's also cloud connected. So you can replicate data from these on-prem on-top systems into on-top in the public clouds. Uh, you can do uh, uh, backups to the cloud. You can tear data off to the cloud. So if you have any plans of going from on-prem into the public cloud, or you think somebody might come up with these plans in the next three to five years, then this is a good system to get you ready for that migration or for that uh, uh, expansion into the public cloud. These systems are connected to the cloud from day one. Uh, when I did this presentation last week for, uh, for our resellers, I said that, well, next week we'll, we'll have this in our quote tool and you can start building your quotes and you can, uh, you can send out prices to your customers. So good news, uh, that was yesterday. Uh, if you're interested in these systems, please talk to your, to your reseller or, or reach out to me and we'll get you information on how much these cost and how much money you can save on going to this capacity flash system instead. Shipping now. So these are the three boxes that we have. Uh, the C250, it's a, a two rack unit system. It has internal hard drives. Um, it can scale from 122 terabytes. And these are 15.3 terabyte drives. And in the back of my head, I'm doing the math right now. So that would be 12 drives that you start with. No, it wouldn't, it would be eight, uh, good. It would be eight hard drives that you start with. And then you can scale up to 734 terabytes or more. Uh, of course, on top of that, we'll add RAID and then we'll, we'll get our storage efficiency to get some of that space back. But in the raw hard drive capacity, 734 terabytes. Uh, when it says up to 2.9 petabytes effective, that means if you have a five to one storage efficiency, efficiency ratio. These are marketing slides. I think uh, you should expect a three to one storage efficiency ratio. We can even put that in writing and guarantee it to you. The C400 is, is the mid-sized, uh, uh, system in this bunch. So the C400 
also starts in with eight hard drives, one 22 terabytes, can scale up to 146 petabytes raw. Um, this system is a 4U chassis. It has a disk shelf from the start, so no internal hard drives, and you can add, uh, you can add additional disk shelves as well. The C800 um, is a bit of a beast, actually. A800, uh, you know, the A, uh, AFF, A series system that this, uh, this is a sibling of, is one of the fastest systems on the market. So, so, so the C800 is the same system, but replacing the all uh, the triple layer flash drives with quad level flash drives. Uh, starts a bit bigger, 182 terabytes. So that would be your 12 drives, up to 2.2 petabytes uh, raw in one system. It has a 4U base, it has internal hard drives, but you can also add disk shells to it. So these are the sizes. The C250 is a good start. As you can see, it can scale up to a huge capacity on its own. Uh, the C400 would be if you start to run primary workloads against the system and if you have a bit, if you have a substantial load. Uh, and the C800 if, if you need a massive capacity and also need a lot of performance. So that would be a use case for something like a, a data lake. Uh, I see I have a question in Q&A. Uh, I have a pause in a bit and I'll, I'll look at the questions. If you have any other questions, please uh, put them in the Q&A and I will answer them shortly. Should have started with that. So why would you even go to triple layer uh, flash or quad level flash when you can just run spinning hard drives? Well, power and cooling is a big thing. Um, if we compare a C250, so the small C series system with uh, legacy hard drives, 1.8 terabytes. So those would be uh, 10K fast drives, the closest comparison with our quad level flash. Uh, you'd need two and a half racks to get the same capacity that you would in a C250. So power and cooling for sure. The footprint in your data center goes down and uh, we can get more data into a smaller smaller physical space, fewer hard drives and smaller physical space, 98% decrease in rack space, 97% less power consumption. So if power and cooling is something that you're thinking about, well, this is a system that can make or break your power and cooling and power budget. If we look more into the details of this, these systems, um, you can see that the expansion capabilities of them are great. Um, in all of these systems, we use 100 gig ethernet. So the C250, it's a smaller system. It only has 400 gig ethernet ports. You can go all the way up to the C800 that can provide 20 100 gig ethernet ports. Um, it ha also has 25 gig ethernet, which is more of a, a common uh, data center standard. So you would probably use 100 gig in the core and then in your uh, access layer switches or your X switches, you would add 25 gig ethernet. Uh, plenty of those ports as well. And of course, since this is unified storage, you can do SIPs and NFS, uh, you can do uh, S3 object storage, you can do ice casting, but you can also use fiber channel. You can have 16 fiber channel uh, ports in the C250, all the way up to 32 in the C800. So for any NAS workload or any SAN workload, or both of them together, these are great systems. Uh, the minimum OMTAS support right now is 9121. Uh, 9.12.1 is the release that we've released around Christmas time last year. So it's been around for uh, less than six months now. So it's our newest release, 9.12. Um, those of you who know the ONTAP release cadence, you know that we release a new ONTAP version every six months. Uh, so the 9.13 release, 9.13.1, should come out here right before the summer. And you get a lot of stuff in the box. So. For the first time since I started at NetApp, we built a, a bundle of ONTAP licenses that is more or less inclusive of everything. There are a couple of things that are excluded. I'll have, I'll have them on the next slide. So first of all, all the protocols are included. NFS, SIFS, uh, Block, Object, Unified, you name it. Uh, you can even do NVMe over Fiber Channel or NVMe over TCP. All of those protocols are supported. We also have a uh, top of class storage efficiency. So uh, uh, we include deduplication, compression, compaction. So that's when we take compressed blocks and take many of those and put it into one 4K on tap block. We also, of course, use thin provisioning. So when you create a one terabyte uh, LAN, for instance, for your fiber channel workload, we don't consume one terabyte of space until you start to fill up that LAN. 
we can all, always tear off cold data, unused data uh, to object storage or to cloud or uh, maybe to a spinning hard drive on top system providing S3 storage to you. The big one is that we include uh, the security and compliance suite. So that gives you uh, near real time detection of, of a uh, ransomware. So we, uh, we start looking at the IO pattern in the system and uh, we learn what a normal state is. And when something happens, when a ransomware comes in and starts to encrypt files, that is seen as abnormal and we can flag that. We can take snapshots immediately so you can get back to, to a point in time where the virus only started to encrypt things and hasn't encrypted all of your data. Uh, and of course, with some alerts so that you know that something is happening. We have also included tamper-proof snapshots on the primary side. So uh, a traditional NetApp setup would be a primary system where you run your workloads, local snapshots, and then replicate the data to a secondary system where you keep your backups. So you can keep snapshots for a longer time here. You use the local snapshots to immediately get back in case something happens. But if the whole system breaks, well, your snapshots break with them and you want that replicated data to be there. Now, in, a, in an attack where a rogue admin does something or a, an admin gets their credentials stolen, uh, we can tamper-proof the local snapshots so that not even an administrator can go in and delete them. Uh, that means I, if an administrator gets compromised, they still cannot delete all your primary data and all of your uh, local backups on that primary system. We also have multi-admin verification. I'll talk about that in a bit. And we can also use F policy to block known malicious files. So that would be things that uh, have a suffix dot crypto or, or dot, uh, uh, dot locker. So we have a long list that we provide to you of known virus extensions. Um, and we can, uh, um, we can use F policy to make sure that those files never end up on your storage. So for data protection, uh, we of course integrate with the uh, biggest backup vendors. But we also provide business continuity in the form of Metro cluster. We can do synchronous and asynchronous snap mirrors. So that's our replication between the primary system and the secondary system. And of course, snapshots and clones, that's what we're known for. Uh, we also have multi-tenancy and quality of service. So when you have multiple different uh, users, maybe different customers in the same system, we can use quality of service to make sure that they never uh, impact each other. Um, a note on quality of service. So in the beginning of this presentation, I talked about the different types of spinning hard drives and how we build services around that. In a flash world, uh, we usually only have super, super fast flash drives. And now we have really fast capacity flash. Uh, it's hard to build tiers between those two different disk types because they're both really fast. And the bottleneck is usually the controller. Uh, instead, you build your services using cold to service. So you can guarantee to your users that when you pay me X amount of uh, money for a terabyte, you'll get X amount of IOPS as well. That's how you build your service tiers today. And it's all built on ONTAP. So uh, the same ONTAP that you would have in the old, well, I was gonna say old A series. So our old flash systems or the spinning hard drive systems, the fast systems and these capacity flash systems. It's the same ONTAP everywhere. We can provide on top on-prem in your own private clouds or in any of the public clouds. Uh, so those would be AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, IBM, um, or whatever SaaS services you decide to use. So the software bundle that we use for the capacity, capacity flash systems is called on top one. Um, there are a few things that are hidden. So uh, the things that we do not provide with the on top one are things like uh, cloud backup service. So those are services that we, uh, that we provide to you where you can send your snapshots, not to a secondary system, but directly into the cloud and restore them to any on top system anywhere in the world. Um, that is an additional uh, license. But the base cap capability, the functionality called Snap Mirror Cloud, the technology that cloud backup service uses, that's included in, in uh, on top one. Right, just to recap the C-series here. C-series is efficient. Um, we use the same storage efficiency features that you have in ONTAP already. Um, we can reduce the rack space in your data center by going from spinning hard drives to capacity flash. Um, it, 
you've always been able to go from spinning hard drives to flash, but the cost has been too big to send all of that data that you wanted to store in capacity storage on performance storage. Now we have something in between that can be a better fit. It's secure. So we use multi-factor authentication. So that means that uh, whenever an administrator, for instance, wants to delete a volume, you can make sure that another administrator has to okay it as well. It's kind of like uh, launching a missile. You have to turn two keys at the same time. Uh, we have application consistent data protection. So that means that when, for instance, you have an Oracle database running on your system, we can put that database into backup mode before we take our snapshots. And once the snapshot is done, we can uh, reactivate that database. And of course, we always encrypt data uh, in transit between systems. We use TLS encryption there, but we also encrypt data on, uh, at rest, either on-prem or in the public clouds. So you know that your data is yours and only yours. We talked a bit about that, uh, uh, the autonomous ransomware protection, but uh, we've also improved our file system auditing capabilities. So you can, uh, you can see who is doing what in the system. And of course, uh, data protection is great. Data recovery is even better. So using snapshots, you can get your data back in seconds. Uh, we can lock down those snapshots to, to protect them using snapdoc, snapdoc technology. So those will be your tamper-proof snapshots. All of this included in the ONTAP license, uh, ONTAP 1. And finally, the C-Series is scalable. I talked about the 24 nodes of, of C-Series. Your cluster doesn't just have to have C-series in it. So if you have a cluster where you have some uh, NetApp, AFF, A-series, all flash systems and some fast systems uh, with spinning hard drives, you can add the C-series to that cluster. And since a cluster is one entity and your storage virtual machines span the whole cluster, you can move volumes from uh, uh, an AFF, A-series down to the capacity flash system or you can take a volume from one of those hybrid systems and move it into capacity flash and get more performance. So depending on, on your use case, you might uh, move some workloads to a slower and cheaper tier, which would be capacity flash, or you could have some workloads that are sitting on spinning hard drives today that need more performance, but you cannot, mo uh, you, you, um, you cannot justify the cost of, of a traditional wall flash. Well, now with a simple volume move, you can move it into capacity flash in the same cluster. That's really cool. And finally, it's cloud connected. I talked about this a bit before. Um, so for instance, you could have a data store uh, for VMware sitting on your C series uh, in your data center. You could replicate that into Google and then use that as a data store with VMware in Google Cloud. So that would be your disaster recovery. Um, just replicate the data. And if something happens, that's when you fire up the VMware environment and start all of your ESXi service on your VMs. We can also do backup to cloud. So of course we can replicate data to another ONTAP system in the cloud, but we can also send data directly from, from our local snapshots into object storage without any NetApp system in between. Tiering to cloud. So we look at all of those different tiny, tiny 4K blocks that we have in our storage system and see which ones haven't we touched in the last, let's say 30 days. The, the slider is between two and 183 days. So two days to half a year. Um, and when we find code blocks, we put them together, make an object out of it and store it in object storage. And as a user, you don't know this. You just work with your files and LUNs and your data as usual. Some of it's uh, read and written into Flash. Some of it's read from, from object storage. You can also cache to cloud. So this is a new, uh, it's not a new function. We've had the thing called flex cache for a long time, but it's become more popular recently as some of our customers are moving into the public clouds. Some workloads, need to live both on-prem and in the cloud at the same time, either during a migration or, uh, or after a migration as, as a new state. We use flex cache to make a volume available in multiple places at the same time. So these are some of the use cases that, that we think you would use this for, but I'm happy to hear more of them if you have them. Um, first, we'll get rid of those old uh, hybrid systems that are still running primary workloads. Um, you can you can get a better TCO, you get absolutely better power and cooling, um, but you get better speed and better performance and better efficiency as well. So when you're looking at doing a refresh of your systems that you have today, 
you might not want to go to flash and spinning hard drives anymore. You might want to go to performance flash and capacity flash instead. And we'll help you look at the cost of that and, and the TCO. You can also move tier one workloads to this. So uh, um, for many workloads, two to four milliseconds is an okay latency. So that could be uh, media and rendering. It could be things like AI or data lakes, so things that require a large capacity and a good performance. But you can also use this for home directories, uh, maybe uh, some of your databases that don't require the absolute top performance, and even for VMware workloads. We can also use it for tier two workloads. So that would be your test and dev environments or your backup environment, things that don't really require performance, but you might want to have the, uh, the speed and, and efficiency and the, um, and the density of the capacity flash instead. So uh, refreshing hard drive systems. We're using this for primary workloads. Uh, maybe this is the first time that you can justify the cost of all flash. Well, capacity flashes is a good performance uh, and price point. Or for tier two workloads, where you're looking at getting the maximum capacity into the smallest footprint as possible. Uh, of course, we're really proud of our new vessels. I think they look really good. I'm not a fashion expert, but they, they look decent to me. Uh, they're made of recycled plastics, so, um, so not a big impact on the environment to go to these vessels instead. Uh, we imagine this being a, a, um, a showcase in your data center, um, and we hope you like them as well. The NetApp logo uh, uh, is not lit, so, so there are no lights in the NetApp logo. They could be added, but if we want to be sustainable, maybe not add a lot of LED lights to everything you sell, right? Uh, if you buy a system today, you might get the old vessel first, and then uh, we'll start shipping the new vessels during this year. So those of you who, uh, um, who've been working a lot with NetApp, you know that there was a C series system before, it was called the C190. Um, we've taken the C190 and we've well, replaced it, refreshed it into the AFF A150. So this is a new, entry point into the A-series. Um, we, uh, we unlocked some of the CPU cores that we had in the C190, so we get better performance, 20 to 40%. Uh, you have a ton of different options for disk drives. C190 was kind of a fixed, configu fi fixed configuration, it was hard to say. Uh, since we've added more CPU cores, all of a sudden we have support from Metro Cluster. So you can have a tiny metro cluster with using A150s for the workloads that absolutely have to be synchronously replicated all the time. And then maybe not use metro cluster for, the, for the, your other workloads. It's to just use asynchronous replication, classic snap mirror. These systems also ship with a 9.12.1. Uh, good to know. So if you want a small, high performance system, the A150 is a good option for you. And this is our new portfolio in one slide. So everything runs on tap. We have, uh, we have other products as well, but in reality, the things we sell are on tap systems or on tap services in the cloud. It's all based on on tap. When we add a new feature, we add it to on tap. We do not create the new product and sell it as an add on or as a new silo in your data center. We add it to on tap. And we have three products the A series the C series, and then the FAS. So the FAS stands for Fabric Attached Storage because it's unified, so it can attach the ethernet and the fiber channel. Uh, the AFF in both A series and C series is all flash FAS. So all flash fabric attached storage. Uh, and of course, we have integrated this solution with, uh, with products from other vendors. So here's an example, it's a FlexPod XCS. So it's a, it's a Cisco servers, Cisco networking, NetApp storage, and then Cisco management for the entire system. All of this managed by NetApp Blue XP, which is a new unified control plane for any data in the hybrid cloud. I'm looking at the clock and I see that it's a bit faster. Finally, using these products and these softwares, uh, we can give you on-premises data storage. So that would be the on-tap systems. You also have the E-series, so those are our 
JPOD boxes really are, are um, we usually call them our dumb storage, but it's it's really dense, it's really fast. It's good if you're only using your storage for one application at a time. And storage grid, which is our on-prem object storage. So those are the storage products that we have, and they can cover any use case that you might have. We also brought these into the public cloud. So you have cloud volumes on top, which is the same on top on a virtual machine in the public cloud. And the hyperscalers have taken our on top uh, um, intellectual property and built their own products around that. In Azure, it's Azure Nether Finance. In Amazon, it's FSX for Nether on top. And in Google, we have cloud volume service. And we've added a wrapper around this of data services. So uh, uh, we've added data protection capabilities with cloud backup service. Uh, we've added privacy and compliance you know, using data sense. I can look into your data and see what's actually in there. And should that data really be stored in the cloud or on this file share? Uh, and we've added uh, um, capabilities to manage all of this through then up Blue XP. In addition to this, we also uh, manage your cloud operations using the spot by NADA portfolio. So that would be things like making sure that you're running the right virtual machine for your workload in the public cloud. And if you're not, we'll change it for you to a cheaper version. All of this monitored and uh, uh, optimized using Cloud Insights. So that's your tool to monitor anything in the public cloud or on-prem, doesn't just have to be NADA products. So in a heterogeneous IT environment, uh, Cloud Insights is a good tool to see what you're actually running, where do you have problems, where, where is everything working fine, uh, where should you add capacity, or where can you decrease capacity, what type of storage tiers should you build. Again, on-prem, private clouds, any public cloud. I'm going to pause here and look at the Q&A. Uh, first question from Joseph. Uh, hello, just a question. How about metric cluster capability in case of CSIRs, or is it designed just for single site solutions? Uh, they all have metric cluster capabilities. That would be metric cluster IP. Uh, we imagine some customers using this for primary workloads, and those workloads might need to be synchronously replicated with RPO and RTO zero. So yes, metric cluster. Uh, second question, Niklas, uh, support for Metro Cluster. Yes, uh, it does have support for Metro Cluster. Good, easy, uh, easy, friendly questions. I love it. Uh, keep shooting the questions and I'll go on to the next slide. <coughs> oh, so NetApp Advanced, this is our new program for how you can consume NetApp storage or NetApp services. And trying to change the slide there. Um, the way our customers are consuming our storage is starting to change. And it's been starting to change over the last couple of years. Uh, it used to be that you uh, uh, made an educated guess of how much capacity you needed in three to five years. And then you bought a system that could cover that and you bought support for the system and that was it, you owned it. These days, it's a bit harder to make that educated guess because all of a sudden somebody might decide that this company is going all in on cloud or we're cloud first now, or uh, we uh, decided to build a data lake, so we need twice the capacity. Uh, we want to make sure that when you invest into NetApp, uh, that is a no regrets decision. Uh, whatever uh, you, uh, you start to use today, you should be able to adjust that into whatever you need tomorrow. So this is the, the mindset that we have had when we went through how our customers buy our products and, and what gaps do we have in our offering? So the first thing is that we've, uh, we've added a storage lifecycle program. Um, so we can, uh, we can do a, actually I have it on the next slide. We can do a free controller upgrade every three years. And if, you've, uh, if your requirements have changed since you, you last did your controller upgrade, well, you can take some of the money that would have been spent on that new controller and buy NetApp solutions in the cloud instead. So let's say you're, you're in a company that's moving into the public cloud. Well, you can buy the capacity that you need on-prem today. And three years from now, when that capacity requirement has reduced because things are going into the cloud and the capacity requirement there is growing, well, uh, go to a smaller controller and then instead invest into cloud volume, cloud volumes on tap. So your on-tap estate can move from on-prem into the cloud in a in marketing speak, it would be a seamless way, but in a simple and uh, efficient way, at least. Uh, we added the capability to do a capacity refresh. And 
of course, we uh, we help you with software updates. So uh, whenever you buy into an app system, you get new functionality in every OnTap release, and those are free of charge and included in your software agreement, in your support agreement. Sorry. So if you invest into OnTap today, you know that that investment can be reused uh, in the future as well. Again, cloud advantage, move investment from on-prem into the public cloud to meet new demands because demands are shifting and they are hard to predict, predict as well. Um, we also give you a storage efficiency guarantee. So depending on the data you have, the workload you have, we can guarantee a storage efficiency number. And if we cannot meet that number, we will make it right by you. So let's say you have a, uh, a SAN workload for instance, and you need to store 100 terabytes of data. Um, and let's say you buy 120 terabytes of capacity from us, that would be 20 terabytes of free space at the end after the migration is done. Well, if we don't get to the four to one storage efficiency, uh, that would have required us to provide 25 terabytes of actual hard drive space to you. We will add more disks until you get to that 20 terabyte free space that you were expecting to have at the end. Uh, we'll add hard drives until you get to that. Uh, and there's no hard feelings involved in that. Uh, it's a really simple process. So if you know your workloads and you want to get a better price from your NetApp reseller or directly from us, um, you, will, uh, you can go through this exercise with us. We'll guarantee a storage efficiency number. And it won't be four to one for everyone. We have different, different numbers for different types of workloads. And some data might be encrypted already and some data might be um, impossible to, to uh, compress, for instance, uh, video files. But we'll look at that and we'll give you a number that is specific to you. And we'll guarantee that uh, in writing. So final note on sustainability uh, before we close up the call. Um, our vision is to help our customers get the most out of their data. But that's built on the idea that uh, the things you're doing with your data is going to deliver positive impacts for humanity and for the world and, and for your business, of course. Because everything we do in IT has an environmental footprint. And we don't run all of these IT applications just for, the, just for the fun of it. We do it because they are critical to our business. We do it because we want to help our business grow. We do it to make sure that we can deliver to our customers in the end. So it's not like we're choosing to run these IT applications. We, we have to do it to, to have our business up and running. But I think it's our responsibility to make sure that the impact that those applications have on the environment is as small as possible and that the value you get out of that environmental footprint is as big as possible. So it's kind of like two levers, uh, the best, uh, uh, the lowest footprint and the best efficiency. So when we look at sustainability and energy efficiency, it's, it's become a hot topic, at least uh, here in, in Sweden where, I, where I'm sitting uh, and across the Nordics in my discussions with customers as well. And, and I think there are two, uh, two perspectives on this. In the short term, um, we're looking at the energy prices. Um, here in Sweden, we're having an energy crisis right now. My uh, electricity bill for, uh, for the month of December, Christmas, uh, was extremely expensive. It was four times as high as the year before. And our uh, businesses running in these, uh, our businesses are facing the same challenge. Uh, energy is becoming more and more costly and we have to reduce our energy, energy requirement. So going from spinning hard drives to capacity flash would be one thing. Finding data that you're not using anymore and deleting it might be another way. Tearing off cold data from spinning hard drives into the, let's say the public cloud because they're carbon neutral might be a third way. So reducing your energy consumption right now to save some money right now, that's a short-term perspective. In the long-term perspective, I mean, this is the only planet we have. Uh, Elon Musk still hasn't made it to Mars. So, so we need to make sure that the earth stays around for a bit longer. Um, there's a number that says that um, out of all data created, only 32% is ever used again. So that means that 68%, two thirds of the data that we create is never used again. And we're still storing it on spinning hard drives, consuming power and cooling. Um, and that's, that doesn't make sense, it's just dumb. 
uh, using cloud data sense, we can help you find your 68% of the data never used again. Uh, but regardless of which tool you use, these are the kind of things you have to think about in, in the long term. Do we really need to store all of this data? Do we really need to run all of these applications? And if we do, how can we do that in the best way? Um, we have a product called Keystone. So that is our way of consuming storage in a, in a cloud-like manner. So rather than buying a system and keeping it for three to five years, uh, you make a commitment with us that I want to store, let's say 200 terabytes for the next 12 months and we'll put equipment in your data center. And after 12 months, if you don't want it anymore, take it back. If you want more, we'll add more. As a part of that of Keystone, we provide a availability guarantee. So that's a 99.999% uh, availability SLA that we provide as part of Keystone. We're adding a sustainability SLA to that as well. So uh, depending on uh, which uh, performance tiers or which systems you, you consume through Keystone, we can give you a standard watt per terabyte uh, uh, SLA for each of these performance tiers. So when you consume that of storage, you know what the impact will be on the environment. And that's how you can start to make decisions. If you know what your impact is today, that's when you can start to plan for reducing it or at least justifying it. As a part of our data sheets, we're also adding uh, uh, our carbon footprint. We, uh, I mean, if we look at this slide in a bit more detail, and I, I can go closer to the screen here so I can see the numbers. Uh, I suggest you do the same. If you look at the blue box there, it says 87% is product usage and 13% is other. So we looked at our products when we build them and when we ship them to you and uh, the cost of people like me selling it, um, developers developing it, all of that, things that we do to get the product up and running. That's 13% of the carbon footprint for the lifetime of that system. The other 87% 80 is, well, you running the system. So we do our best to reduce those 13% as much as we can. We go to more uh, recycled materials. We go to uh, cleaner transports. We uh, look over our car fleet. So for uh, a NetApp employee who has a car, uh, we are directed to use a uh, electronic vehicle, uh, an electric vehicle instead. So we do our best to reduce those 13%. But reducing the 87%, some of that work is on you. And to uh, empower you to actually make decisions around that, we've, we've shown you the data. Um, and I'll, in the, not the next slide, but the one after that, I'll show you what it looks like in the systems. <coughs> For my guys, my uh, guys and girls who design our solutions and build our systems and recommend what system you should be running for your workloads, uh, one of the tools they use is called Fusion. You don't have to remember that, but now you've heard it. And we've added a, a capability to Fusion where we cannot just look at what, what would be the fastest system, what would be the uh, system with the best capacity, and what would be the cheapest system uh, that we could provide to this customer. We can also look at what is the well, greenest system that we can provide. So for the, the amount of data you need, the performance you need, well, in this case, it will be an AFF A250 that will have the best well, lowest carbon footprint. Uh, and depending on what is uh, valuable to you, is it performance or is it cost or is it being sustainable? Uh, we could recommend different types of systems. For those of you who have looked at BlueXP, you recognize this screen. If you haven't looked at BlueXP before, please do, bluexp.nadapp.com. Um, we're adding a, um, sustainability dashboards to BlueXP so that you can look at the carbon footprint of your entire estate. Uh, we will uh, give you a score. So here we have a 55% sustainability score. I don't know if that's good or bad. I'll have to look at this when we actually ship it mid 2023. Uh, but you can see here where, uh, what systems are using the most power. Uh, they might be targets for, uh, for decommission. Uh, what systems are, um, are giving you the biggest carbon footprint. Uh, how many BTUs are you consuming? How much uh, cooling do you need? Uh, we provide you some actions. So things that you should do to uh, improve the sustainability uh, of your environment. And we can even give you uh, those fix buttons. There's those, those will give you Ansible playbooks that actually implement the fix. 
we we uh, we tend to not make changes to your systems automatically just because we think they're better. Instead, we give you the automation that you would need to do it yourself. So sustainability dashboards that, so that you can understand your carbon footprint and start to optimize it. Uh, you can also drill down into separate systems and look uh, look both at the typical uses or usage or the worst usage, but we can also see in real time what, what what carbon footprint does my workloads actually uh, generate right now? And as a final thing, the things we're doing around those 13% that is, uh, I was gonna say our problem, but our thing to solve, uh, we're uh, starting to ship titanium rated power supplies. So we used to have platinum, we're going to titanium because those are even better for the environment, more efficient. Um, we started shipping titanium rated PSUs uh, on all new quotes since November last year. So if you've recently bought a system, you are having titanium power supplies right now. And for the rest of you, when you're doing your tech refresh, this is what you're getting. Uh, just one of the proof points of the things we do in, in our part of that big blue uh, square. So this is our way of looking at it. Um, not necessarily that we need to reinvent storage, but we need to uh, refresh storage. We need to uh, improve the way we look at data storage and data management because capacity is important. You need somewhere to store all those bytes. Performance is important because you need to get them at the right speed when you need them. But sustainability is becoming equally important because uh, no capacity and no speed in the world will save you uh, if we don't have a planet anymore. So wrapping up, a uh, quick recap of the things I talked about today. NetApp AFFC series, so capacity flash systems. If you looked at flash before and decided that it's too expensive for you, please look again. The C series is the right price point for excellent performance. Um, we also uh, revamped the C190 into the A150. So this is a metro cluster capable, all flash performance storage system uh, with a small capacity footprint. So for those workloads that absolutely require synchronous replication, or maybe just a, a remote office somewhere where you need some high performance flash, the A150 is an excellent choice for that. And then from A150, you can scale up to the A250, A400, and A800, uh, and the A900 if you want to go really big. We've also expanded our capabilities to show you your sustainability, um, your sustainability net metrics. So how much power and cooling do you actually use? What is your carbon footprint right now? Uh, we'll add those sustainability dashboards and uh, that sustainability score to Blue XP where you can look at it. And finally, uh, hybrid cloud is here. Um, at NetApp, we say that your journey to the cloud is over because everything is hybrid cloud now. So you might want to start optimize, optimize your hybrid cloud rather than looking at something in the future where you're going. As a proof point of that, we're adding uh, on-top support, support for uh, VMware Engine in Google Cloud. So if you're running VMware on-prem and you want to run VMware in the public clouds, so you can use the same storage system for data stores uh, anywhere. And that's what I had today. Before I let you go, let me take a final look at the Q&A. No more questions, but if you have any questions after this presentation, uh, please reach out to me and I'll do my best to get them answered. Thank you for listening. Thank you.